Now on USA Tonight. Rat race. As quick as we can tell you about the rodent problems in this neighborhood, people race to their phones to tell us what was biting into their happiness. Swim science. The Olympic swimmers have dazzled us with their speed, but if this Maryland man has his way, someday they'll be even quicker. And incentive pay. Money prizes for kids who do well in school. Is this really the way to fix education? From WUSA 9 News, this is USA Tonight with Derek McGinty. Well, good evening. Every so often, we do a story that touches a nerve and ignites a flood of phone calls, and yesterday's rat story was one of those. Apparently, Montgomery County is not the only place suffering from a summer of rats brought on by the Cicada Spring. Our own Stacey Cohan heard from one woman who told us, you think they have rats in Silver Spring? Come to our neighborhood. So she did. This part of Northeast is their turf now. And this isn't one or two running around. We have gangs of that. Terrorizing all who live here. I got cats and the cats scared of me. In fact, when D.C. residents saw the rats we found in Montgomery County yesterday, they weren't impressed. They say the rat pack that runs this alley off 18th Street is bigger and meaner. We couldn't get any to show their furry faces during the day, but the evidence of their existence is obvious. It's so bad that the rats are eating through our new trash can that the city has delivered us. When we walk out in our yard, there are rats there, feces everywhere, and the smell is terrible. And uh, some, uh, sometimes you walk out, one time, they, one did run over my foot. One morning, I get up in the morning, and I'm sitting there waiting on my car to warm up. Next thing I know, I seen, you know, they dancing up and out of the sewer holes. The Gale Street residents say they've called the D.C. Health Department and a few yards have been sprayed, but the rats remain. The city is supposed to have one rodent control officer per ward. No word yet on how often they come out and what they do to get rid of rats. Whatever it is, these folks say it certainly isn't enough. My fear is a disease. Uh, I mean, it's this terrible odors back there. The feces are all over every, every place. It's just, it's just nasty. So what would you like to see Health Department to do? Gas. <laughs> Gas them if they can. <laughs> Anything just to get rid of them. Well, Miss Scott, I just got off the phone with the D.C. Health Department. They told me they did see a spike in rat complaints this summer, very much like they've seen in Montgomery County. And they said the only way to get rid of an entire neighborhood problem is to get every resident to sign a petition, giving those rodent folks permission to hit every yard and every alleyway until there's nowhere for the rats to hide. Now, if you live in the city and you have a rat, rat problem, just log on to our website, WUSATV9.com, click on USA Tonight, and you can check in on my story, and it'll show you how to get some help. Okay, but the reality is, of course, where there are people, there are rats, so... You're never going to get rid of all of them, but they could damp it down a bit, right? Yeah, most of the folks say, hey, one or two, fine. 15, 20, you know, that, that's a gang. That's right. a problem. And, right. and, you know, you think that you're safe putting it in those trash cans. You see those huge holes in these Those are some scary process. holes. Metal trash cans, apparently. Those are some tough rats. Indeed. Thanks a lot, Stacey. Appreciate it. Well, look, a string of four bank robberies all in one day. That's topping our look at other stories you need to know about for August 19th. Police in Maryland and Virginia are searching for some brazen bank robbers who apparently picked the same day to do their dirty work. In Virginia, a two-man team with guns held up two banks in Fairfax County. And over in Maryland, a man who only used a note to say he had a gun was able to pull off two robberies within 15 minutes in Prince George's County. Investigators believe there's no connection. Well, so much from that offer of peace from Muqtada al-Sadr, Turns out his followers may be following through on their threats to attack Iraq's oil industry. They've broken into the headquarters of an oil company in Basra, setting the warehouses and offices on fire. And another group of Maryland National Guard members is headed for Iraq. 52 members of the 129th Signal Battalion said goodbye today in Towson. They'll be overseas for at least a year. If you've been watching America's Olympic swimmers, maybe you've said to yourself, man, they swim like fish. Well, what if they really could swim like fish? A local professor of fluid dynamics is working with USA Swimming to make it happen. Bruce Lashan with Swim Science. If I could be like a shark, I would go fast, but I can't. Like a lot of young swimmers, Rockville's Daniel Mengering has big dreams. The US Open this year, and maybe someday the Olympics. A slight improvement in the dolphin kick he uses could make the difference between fame and obscurity. It could probably be like two, three tenths of a second off each wall, so that could be huge. And you can see that very, very nice posture going absolutely parallel to the bottom of the pool. Ah! 
At George Washington University, Professor Rajat Mittal has been studying the dolphin kicks used by Natalie Coughlin and Michael Phelps, kicks that have already helped propel them to Olympic gold. The oldest record in the books is obliterated. Mittal figures if he can create a computer model of the way Coughlin and Phelps swim, he can help other swimmers become even more successful. If we can understand what makes them better kick, dolphin kickers, that we can make half a body length eventually on the swimmers who are not able to do as well. Mattal's created a three-dimensional computer image of Conklin that shows not just how she pushes on the water, but how the water pushes back, how it swirls and eddies, creating both drag and propulsion. That's like a billion, billion, billion or something. Absolutely. That we're talking about gazillions. But even at 100 billion calculations a second, it takes a long time for an $800,000 supercomputer to model how water moves. That's as big as a refrigerator running for three to four months continuously in order to be able to give you one stroke. They have these little pectoral fins and they do a beautiful job of swimming fairly fast and maneuvering very well. Mattal developed the software by studying surf perch and bluegills for the Navy. The military wants to use it to design small robotic submarines. It was a natural jump to replace the fish in the models with humans. And in the long run, Mittal hopes to create a customized stroke for every human body type, from long and lanky Daniel Mengering to his smaller friends David Islin and Casey Germunder. Their coach sent three youngsters to the Olympic trials this year, and he says Mittal's program could make a big difference. The science of swimming keeps getting better and better, and that's how you see these world records break all the time. Mattal's now harnessing IBM's Blue Gene supercomputer, but it will still be months before he finishes his calculations. So it won't make a difference in Athens, but he says just wait four years for Beijing. All right, uh, computers are one thing, but I have actually tried to do that dolphin kick. It is so hard for us regular folk. Does he really think he can make a difference, make people swim like fish? Well, I, I don't think he's talking about regular folk like you and I, <laughs> but he's talking about people like those youngsters out at Montgomery Aquatic Center who get in the hour uh, in the pool for five hours a day, mm. seven days a week. And if he can bring them up just a little bit, he can make all the difference. You know, fish, they've been learning how to swim for millions and millions of years, evolving to swim most efficiently. If he can learn, learn just a little bit about that and transfer that to the dolphin kick, wow. Yeah, I was also impressed with the amount of time even a supercomputer has to spend figuring this out. How come? Fluid dynamics, this is one of the 10 big challenges in mathematics. Mm. When you talk about all those whirlpools and eddies, both large and tiny, microscopic even, Making those calculations, it's just huge. It's, it's a little bit like calculating the weather. You know, when you think uh, about calculating the entire globe's weather, think how many variables you would have to put into the computer. Well, this is a little bit like that, only it's in a confined space. Really, really tough not to try this at home. Who's the sand? Thank All right. You. Thanks, Derek. Next, attention parents. If your teenage daughter wants to date an older guy, there's a new study you should probably hear about. This is USA Tonight. I'm meteorologist Top Rashad. Severe thunderstorm wash in effect for the entire metro area until 10 p.m. We'll look at our live Doppler 9000. We'll pinpoint some of the activity. We're looking at severe thunderstorm warning for Frederick County, just north or northern Frederick County until 7:15, and for Page County until 7:30. These storms drifting off to the north and east. Some have hail, some have strong winds, and some heavy rains. We'll keep you posted throughout the day and night, and we'll see you tonight at 11. And Derek will be back after this. Tonight's premiere of USA Tonight, paying for the fight in Iraq. Hurricane Isabel is here, and it's getting worse by the minute. Not a glimmer of emotion nor remorse. And that's the kind of man who doesn't deserve to be in society. Saddam's run from justice took him to a filthy pit. Joe Gibbs is back in the game. I'm in this for the long term. The missteps that led to 9-11. This is urban guerrilla warfare. This is a city that has become accustomed to child slaying. Ronald Reagan belongs to the ages now. Slimy green algae, so thick you could scoop it with a spoon. One year of smart reporting, interesting interviews, and award-winning coverage. This is USA Tonight. Your parents always told you that hanging out with the wrong crowd is likely to get you in trouble. But now a new study is putting some facts behind that parental wisdom, finding that the friends that teens hang out with and the amount of time they spend together 
has a big influence on behavior. That Columbia University study finds that teenagers who spend 25 or more hours with their boyfriends or girlfriends per week are more than two and a half times more likely to smoke, two and a half times more likely to drink, and four and a half times more likely to have tried marijuana. Now, that's all compared with young people who spend 10 hours or less a week with that significant other. Researchers say the study's not meant to suggest that teen dating and sexual behavior cause substance abuse, but the results do seem to indicate a connection there. To help us understand what's really going on here is a couple of people who know. Eric LaPrince is with a teen group that spends time talking to teenagers. Ann Weissman is with Metro Teen Aids. Thanks, both of you, for coming in. I, I want to yeah, talk you. a lot about this, as much time as we have anyway. This link between, of course, who you spend time with and what you end up doing is not new, but to link it with your girlfriend or boyfriend seems kind of surprising. And what do you think? It, it is kind of surprising. And, and I just wonder, I think what, one of the important things is, are young people that are spending time with their boyfriends or girlfriends, are they doing something productive? Are they involved in after school programs or out of school time programs? Or what are they doing in their in this free time? Yeah, 24 hours of 25 hours a week is an awful lot. That's almost it's sounds like a job. Time. Right. Way. Eric, what, you, what, you had <laughs> right. some thoughts about that. Well, I think maybe it. It, it gives them more of a chance to experience and more of a chance to step outside of themselves because they're with a significant other. They have more trust in that significant other. So if one of them tries something, the other one might step along with that the significant other. Because they trust that person so much. Yes. The other thing it seems to say is it doesn't matter or they don't mm -hmm. say that it matters if it's a bad person. You know, it's not that you're hanging with the wrong crowd, you're just hanging with this one person. That's also kind of different, I thought. Right, right. And it, I think, again, it, it comes, it goes down to the importance of young people actually knowing and being armed with education and being able to make wise choices about what they're going to do. Yeah, now, speaking of making wise choices, as you try to, you know, put that information out there, it's summer. Kids are hanging mm -hmm. out the way they've always hung out, not sure. thinking about anything too serious most of the time. At least, I remember we didn't. Um, <laughs> how do you get through messages like the ones you're talking about? Well, one of the things that we do at Metro Teenage is we have of, um, peer educators and outreach educators that go out, that are young people that go out and educate their peers about making healthy choices and life decisions, everything from abstinence to safe sex to substance abuse. And sometimes hearing it from a peer instead of hearing it from an adult gets the message across better. Eric, you buying any of this? I guess, yeah. It, it might be some a place where a lot of adults can tell teens what they should do, mm -hmm. but that's not to say that teens are taking it in. I, um, my group, we specifically focus on helping other teens because I guess information coming from someone their own age, maybe they can go, hey, well, I understand that this person's going through the same thing I'm going through. Mm. And they might take it in as something, as a friend helping a friend, mm -hmm. rather less than an adult helping a teenager because it seemed like it's more, more of a rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you hear about a study like this, which seems to suggest to a lot of people that you guys are going to sort of a hell in a handbasket kind of a situation, <laughs> I mean, what's your reaction to that? I'm wow! I'm I'm just amazed. I didn't, I wouldn't never in a million years, never in a million years would I ever guess that something like this would happen. Just for hanging out with the girlfriend boyfriend for a couple of hours. Where oh I... come on now, be real here with me just for a second. Now you're going to tell me that you've never seen that people get involved in things they ought not get involved in over the period of time. Your friends, you and your close friends may not do it, but you got to know some folks that are getting involved with the wrong crowd and doing the wrong things. Yeah, I guess I could say that, but. Still, the statistics, they, they're... they they are kind of surprising. Yeah, All right. the numbers are just huge. You know, and let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Do you think when you look at statistics like this that parents ought to say, you know what, you're too young to have a boyfriend. You're too young <laughs> to have a girlfriend. You guys are spending too much time together. I definitely think that's going to be the knee-jerk reaction for, of most parents. But again, I think it's important to arm your kids and arm your children with kind of the information, what's the next... Well, what if? And to, and to be aware about that, what if? Mm. Um, what if um, they're going to do it anyway? <laughs> Well, that's the I thing. To... That's the thing, Eric. I mean, how, <laughs> how would your friends react if, you know, somebody, if their parents tell them you can't have a boyfriend? Are they going to pay any attention to that? Or they, are they going to go do it themselves? They're anyway? going to do it anyway. And I think while also telling your children about the dangers and their consequences, maybe you should tell them about that instead of saying, hey, you can't have a girlfriend or boyfriend. That's not going to work. It's, mm. it's a part of our adolescence to have someone who mm -hmm. we can relate to or have someone we can spend time with. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can just arm your children with some concerns and tell them how, how you feel and the dangers, and then they'll get it that way. But don't just say you can't have a girlfriend or boyfriend. It's not going to work. Not going to work out. It wouldn't work with me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fair enough. It, wouldn't it work with me It didn't work with a lot of us, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, very quickly now, parents think that when teenagers don't say anything, don't react, they're not listening. Are they listening? Are you listening when, they, when you don't say anything back? We, a lot of times, we are listening. 
we just don't have any input to put on it. We're like, okay, mom, thanks. Can I go have fun? Right. It's not like let's let's have a conversation and let's talk about it. It's more okay, thank you. That, so, but, but you are paying attention a yeah. lot of times. I, I, I know uh, I do. Okay, I think some parents would find that comforting. Eric mm -hmm. LaPrince and Weissman, I want to thank you both. Thank we appreciate you. A little insight. Next, you just wouldn't be the Olympics without a drug scandal. Hear how the latest all comes back to a familiar American name. This is USA Tonight. Tonight on 9 News, it was a busy day for bank robbers in Maryland and Virginia. We'll tell you what happened. Plus, it's the biggest softball game of the year for some local fans. And they're not watching the Olympics. Tonight at 11 on 9 News. The I-Bar is instant information. Weather and traffic updates on the I-Bar. Experienced anchors Andrea Rohn and Mike Walters deliver your top stories of the day. Watch WUSA 9 News from 5 to 7 a.m. Olympic dreams are coming true in Athens tonight, and if you are following the games closely and you don't want us to spoil the surprise, turn your CV TV set down for the next few minutes. Got it? Okay. For the rest of you, there have been some big wins for the Americans today, but it wouldn't be the, the Olympics without some scandals. Two Greek athletes have dropped out of the games for refusing to take drug tests, and just a short time ago, I spoke about it all with the Washington Post's Amy, Sh Amy Shipley, who's in Athens. Two Greek sprinters are off the team, are booted from the games, not for failing drug tests, basically for refusing to take them or not showing up. What's going on there? Well, they, they actually withdrew from the games um, after much embarrassment for, for Greece. Uh, it's really hard, perhaps, for Americans to understand how big this, uh, this was here. It's the equivalent of Marion Jones and Maurice Green getting booted out of the, the Olympics for using for using drugs and and indeed they weren't caught using drugs but they've missed three drug tests over the last since july basically which is very very suspicious to say the least so um the whole thing is very embarrassing for for greeks not only did they miss uh two tests merely at these games but they also were in this motorcycle accident hours before uh they were supposed to hear uh, appear before a disciplinary uh commission so the whole thing was uh, very suspicious, uh, very embarrassing, and quite drawn out, but they have finally withdrawn from the games. They did that yesterday. Now, and so I think Greeks are hoping it'll go quietly away. There's also the issue, however, of Balco somehow being tied into this as well, that there is a list of names from Balco of pe possible people who have benefited from this, uh, this uh, organization that produced these undetectable steroids, and their names are on it. Well, they, they do have... Uh, uh, some connection to the Balco controversy that hasn't been completely fleshed out yet, but I don't think it's any surprise. We we knew uh, from the beginning that the Balco uh, situation was quite wide ranging, and it, it appears that they do have at least an outside connection to that. Let's talk a little bit about a big day for the gymnastics team over there. Yes, uh, it's actually been a big week for uh, the American gymnast. Carly Patterson claimed the uh, all-around gold today, a day yeah. after uh, Paul Hom had an incredible come from behind victory, victory to get the gold. Now, we have to note that the U.S. women were expected to be tremendously strong, the men not quite as strong, and that people had given up on Paul Hamm when he fell off of the bar, basically, on his first uh, attempt earlier uh, in the day. Paul Hamm had an incredible journey from 12th place after a terrible landing on the vault in which he uh, plummeted into the scorer's table. It really looked like he was it was over for him after that. and. He somehow managed to go from 12th to first place by just nailing his last two events. So it was a tremendous performance. He, he was the world champion going into the event, but it was still a huge, huge victory for men's gymnastics. Again, it, it's really not an area the United States has done well for many, many years. The U.S. women's team was expected to, to be great. Um, and... Uh, they, uh, they, I suppose they had a disappointing uh, performance in winning the silver medal as a team, but for Carly Patterson to step up tonight, that's just huge. Amy Shipley, we thank you for joining us. Thank you. Enjoy the games.
Lose weight naturally and keep it off permanently. Diet Fit provides the tools you need to lose weight and improve your eating habits. Join now by logging on to WSATV9.com and save more than 30%. Try Diet Fit. It's easy and fun to use. Before we get to your emails tonight, a story that caught our attention out of the Kansas City Star newspaper. It seems the school district there is paying kids to go to summer school and get good grades. It works like this. Show up every day and maintain a C average or better, and you get a card worth $150 at any store that accepts Visa. And it's working. Summer school attendance is up dramatically. But the other good news for the county is the more students go to summer school, the bigger the check from the state. Well, you know, the question is, does the idea of paying kids to go to school make any of you just a bit queasy? To me, it is a questionable step down a slippery slope, but I want your two cents, so put it in an email. And speaking of email, in the mailbag tonight, Gary of College Park picking up on a rare mistake from our own Stacey Cohan, who yesterday reported on new efforts by D.C. to get the lead out of your water. In that story, she talked about boiling as a precaution in that case, and he says... Nobody says to boil water to get the lead out. In fact, boiling water concentrates lead. You could distill water to get lead out since the lead is left behind when the steam comes off. Wake up. Okay, Gary, consider us now wide awake, and you were not the only one to catch that. I asked Stacey Cohan about this, and she said boiling is for bacteria, filters, and other measures are for lead, and we apologize for suggesting anything else. As always, of course, we want to know what you think about our stories. We want to know what you think about the question I asked, so write us. USA Tonight at WUSATV9.com. That's our show for this evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.